and I, and I, and that made a difference in my life when I was in college, amen. And so, Brother D. Marcellus, uh, uh, appreciate you, sir. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. God is good. Amen. Amen. I appreciate the pastor letting me uh, come out this morning. And uh, what prompted this originally was um, we have several ministries that we work right here in this area. Um, and we are in need of some more volunteers. So I called your pastor and told him what was going on. He has a part in one of our one of our ministries, and uh, Brother Dave Leclaire was involved with him in others. And of course, he has gone on to be with the Lord. So we are short. And he, I said, "Well, could I come and pre present the ministry and share it with folks, and maybe we get a couple." men that would be interested in getting involved. And so that's how this all came about. So let me just go to a, a text verse uh, in uh, the, the gospel, or not, not the gospel, but the Bible uh, uh, in Jude, which is right towards the end of the Bible. I'm only going to read just part of one verse, um, verse number 22 I'm sure that most of you have heard it before, but um, I'm going to I'm going to repeat it and then say a few words about it, and uh, we'll go from there. So in Jude, verse number 22, the Bible says, "And of some have compassion, making a difference." And I entitled the message "Making a Difference." And as I thought about that, I thought about the difference that people have made in my life and what I have seen in other lives. And just to give you an example, for some of you may know me, others I don't know. Um, but um, I was uh, saved in prison uh, in June of 1976 in Barriga, Michigan, which is up across the bridge, right near Marquette. It's clo actually closer to uh, Wisconsin. And uh, I was sentenced to two and a half to 10 years. At that point in my life, I was 34 years old. And my son, Steve, which is uh, sitting in the middle of the, of the pews on this side with the light blue shirt, was 13 years old. He had uh, another brother and two sisters that were in their teens as well. And uh, the one sitting on his right, Brother Larry, is my cousin that lives in this area. Uh, and he's in the same age bracket, roughly. He's a little little older than my, my son Steve. But the point is, we, we were all going to hell. I was, I was not concerned about God, didn't, and I'm, I'm ashamed of it today, but I'm talking about uh, 43 years ago, I didn't care. Uh, and you used to hear people say, hey, you going to hell when you die? Yeah, I'm going to have a party, whoa. Well, can I tell you, if you read the Bible, there's no party in hell. It's going to be something that nobody wants. And there's just some that w have enough guts and enough things inside of them they want to tell others. So they don't go to hell. And, and that's what the purpose of getting together today was. To maybe challenge you to get involved with Rock of Ages uh, because we need more workers to go into the f facilities here in your area. Uh, I, my story, I was as I said, 34 years old, and a pastor from uh, Clarkston, Michigan, came all the way up there, 650 miles, to tell me about Christ. And when he got there, it was 3.30 in the afternoon, uh, he got permission to see me, and he told me who he was, and he said uh, that he would like to share with me how to go to heaven when I die. And I said, yeah, right. And... Uh, 
would you mind if I share it with you? I said, no, go ahead. Well, one thing led to another, and God broke my heart. 34-year-old man. By the way, I got a, a gospel track. You've had them here before. I don't know if there's any left, but I put some out on the table on the left here. But it's got a picture of what I looked like back then at 34 when I went to prison. And uh, it shows what God changed. God changed Leroy Demoselis. My wife and four kids started, they got saved, started going to church. And here we are, 42 and a half years later, my dear wife passed away six months ago. I was married at that time, uh, I don't know, I can't even remember now, uh, 56 years, I believe it is. And she's in heaven today, but uh, she was with me as we raised the kids from a no-God family to a God family. Praise the Lord. So, what what happened was, I was uh, shipped from from uh, Jackson, Michigan, all the way up to Barriga, and that preacher drove that whole distance to tell me about Christ. And he said, Mr. DeMasselis, according to the Bible, you're going to go to hell when you die. It's not a matter of denomination. It's not a matter of, of what you do or don't do. It's a matter of trusting Christ in him alone. Can I have an amen? amen. And so uh, after about five minutes, he said, would you like to do that today? Well, now, all my life I had done what I wanted to do and drink and d- get drunk and do all kinds of wicked, ungodly stuff. And for the first time in my life, I felt like God was speaking. I said, I think I want to see what you're talking about. And uh, he uh, helped me pray and receive Christ. I've been saved 43 years now. And God has truly changed me. So, the question is, and some making a difference. Do you suppose that man coming up there from down in Clarkston, Michigan, driving that whole distance of 650 miles, do you think that he thought he was going to make a difference in anybody after what he heard about me? He was scared to death about me. But it wasn't him, it was God that made the difference. Amen. And he wants to make the difference in your life and my life. He wants to make the difference in these inmates' lives that are right here uh, in, in the prisons right in your area. He wants to make a difference, but he needs more workers. And so that's what I'm asking you to consider today uh, as we think about this uh, making a difference. Um, Last month, for example, this is a sheet, shows exactly the different facilities that we go to every month. We have 86, I think it is, uh, men and women that right now are volunteers that go once a month, twice a month. Some of them depends on what their uh, availability is. But this was the report for the month of, of September, of August. And I, in August, we had 646 inmates come out for our services. And out of that, 115 got saved, gave the life of the Lord. I said, hallelujah. Yes, they gave their life to the Lord. And it's because of churches like this and people like this that care about somebody else going to hell. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. Making a difference. And to think that I could have a part in that. So that's the, that's the idea. But why we came today is to share that and see if you would consider uh, praying about it. Now, making a difference uh, is going to change one man's life, but it's going to change a lot of a lot of folks' lives. For example, in 2016, I I counted all of them, and we had 10,664 inmates out for services in, in that year, and we had a, a 1,958 of them were saved that year. So it's it's every year is different, but. I'm just showing you the results of going 
will make a difference in lives. And what about the lives they've touched? Uh, Brother Dave LeClaire, of course, started going with me over here at the D Dickerson Detention Center in Wayne County. And then we went from there to another facility and so forth. And he was uh, always wanting to go more, go more, go more. And it ended up he was, I think, involved with three facilities uh, and just loved going and telling men and women about Christ. And so that's what we want to do now. We want to try to get somebody to fill his shoes. He's gone. He's in heaven. He's rejoicing with God. Why not somebody take his place? And let's keep it a going. Let's let's see souls saved. So, making a difference. Well, as I thought about that, I thought about uh, some some of the ways we can do that. Uh, I believe that you ought to carry gospel tracks. That's what my track about my life story is that I showed you uh, right here. I believe you ought to carry those with you, one or two or three or four, whatever, uh, different ones. I noticed it out in the, in the lobby there, you've got all kinds of them, different ones. There's some of mine are out there I put there for after the service. You're welcome to take a couple, um, <clears throat> along with my prayer card that's out there. But um, uh, we need to know how to use these then to be able to make a difference. For example, I, I teach the inmates how to hand out tracks in prison. I mean, it's no different than here. It's, you just do the same type of thing. I got a letter from one of the, in, from one of the uh, uh, inmates about that, and he said, here in prison I pass out tracks like you say. Monday through Friday we go to school in prison. About four months ago I ordered a bunch of gospel tracks. Every morning I... Uh, I bring six tracks to class with me. On the way, I pass two restrooms that have three stalls in each. So I put a track on each stall. He says, I figure they can get saved on the toilet just as well as anywhere. That's an, in that's an inmate. Hey, man. Hey, I'm talking about, hey. God wants us to go and tell. And he, he wants us to do it wherever and all the time. Amen. Oh, folks, what a, what a wonderful thought to be able to be part of, of passing out gospel tracts that somebody could uh, come to Christ and trust Jesus. So that inmate's passing tracts out in there, and people are picking them up. He said he came back, and there was a couple of them missing, from the toilet seats, and they were on the, on the desks in the classroom. So he knows that the inmates picked him up. And then I, I thought about, well, you know, we teach him to, to give to other inmates, uh, just uh, talking to them. I, I go out in the streets and the sidewalks in different areas, and I'll, I'll see somebody I don't know, and, and I'll give them a gospel track, that type of thing. Well, this, <clears throat> this one particular person, that uh, uh, had uh, I had the opportunity of, of sharing with, he was uh, he was willing to listen, and um, so I gave him the gospel, and he said um, I, he would trust Christ. And then when he went to his next location in prison, he started telling others there. And I got a letter from him one day, and he said, uh, Brother Leroy, Isaiah 42, 7 says, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from prison, and then them sit, sit in the prison darkness in the prison house. That's my new job, Brother Leroy. That's the best paying job I ever had with ultimate eternal benefits. I, I, I received your wonderful study Bible, so it's so helpful to help me as I stay sharp for the Lord. I was just thinking about a good Bible and the the um, um, mail delivery CO handed me your Bible. Praise God, Brother Doug. So there you go. <laughs> he, he, he was in one prison, 
We led him to Christ there. He spent some time there, and then he was transferred to another prison. One of our other men came in there and found him, and he was able to get his address, and we were able to send him a Bible. I mean, that's how it all works, folks, but it takes people like you to be able to do it. That's why I'm here today. I'm here to beg your, your, your help in getting men and women to go, and if it's once a month, that's a big that's a lot for us to have. So, making a difference. Oh, I'm telling you what, I've had so many opportunities to make a difference, and I thank God for that. The problem is uh, some people don't want to take a chance in making a difference. I was uh, teaching the... Um, inmates how to pass out tracts in their different pods and different places besides their church in in the facility and uh, <clears throat> I got a, a letter from one of the inmates what my my uh, letter and it was written on it let me show you I'm, I enlarged it just so you, I could read it but this came to me from Jackson, from, from the jail over there. And this, this was all shrunk, enlarged, because it was this size. I shrunk it, or enlarged it, so I could read it. But listen to what he says. Now, this is an inmate, because somebody cared, because somebody wanted to make a difference. This is what I got. He, he says, this was found in a small town in Mexico, 450 miles on the far side of the border, in a bar with no name on it, in a town that's not on the map. Then he writes on the bottom, I don't know how it got there, but I think it saved my life. 450 miles south of the border, a, bo a gospel track that somebody from a church had put out in Mexico. And he found it. So, I get the letter with this in it. And, I, and now I'm concerned, how did he get that track? Well, how did that track get where he was? So I went to the prison. And they brought him out to me, and I was able to have a visit with him. And he told me that he had done 12 years in prison and that he was released uh, on parole and that uh, he had just a couple years left to do on paper, they call it, and then he would be released completely. But one of the requirements was he had to stay in Michigan until the two years were up. And so this fella gets out and doesn't, doesn't follow the rules, goes to Arizona, gets to Arizona, runs across a uh, biker's group that's going to this bar 450 miles south of the border. And they're going down there to pick up a load of drugs to bring back to the states. So now this guy that's an ex-con, already violating his parole, now he's even doing worse, he's going to get into a drug deal. This is, he's telling me all this in that room that's there at the jail, or the prison. And then he said, uh, I went into that men's room there when we got to that bar. And when I came out, that brochure of yours was laying on the floor. I don't know how it got there, but I read opened it up and read it, and it said, pray this prayer, and I could be saved. And so he says, I bowed my head right there in the hallway and prayed. He said, when I was done praying, I said, I got to go back and turn myself in. And he turned himself in in Arizona, and they shipped him back to Michigan. And now he was in quarantine in Michigan at Jackson, and that's where I was seated in the room talking to him. And he said with tears in his eyes, 
when I'm through with this time, I'm going to do what you do. Making a difference. Oh, church, you are a church that cares about making a difference because you've got gospel literature all over the place. You've got uh, missionaries that you support. But let's not stop there. Let's reach further in our own backyard. We got several men. We could use a couple more men. We could use a couple women down at the women's prison down in Ypsilanti. We're talking about one service a month or two services a month. We're talking about sometimes a, a daytime service, sometimes a nighttime service. There's so many variations that we can use. But we need your availability. We need your willingness to make a difference. And what a difference it'll make. But when we start going, and I thought about this because I thought about Dave LeClaire, and I thought here he was doing what he was doing, doing a great job, and he's not replaced. We got to get him replaced because we're short in that facility now. So, making a difference. I'm here to tell you today that God has made a difference in my life. My uh, my life now. I'm 76 years old. I've been saved for over 43 years. My kids and my grandkids, 42 of them, that go to church. And they were all going to hell before I went to prison. But now they all go to church. My son Steve is here today. I invited him to drive me down. <laughs> I've been getting old. I can't take the drive. And so I said I need to. What do you call it? Uh, huh? Yeah, chauffeur. So he's my chauffeur. And then my cousin Larry, uh, he doesn't know, but I invited him to come on over and sit down and listen so he could buy lunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. God is good. Oh, church, I'm telling you what, we need to make a difference in our community. We need to make a difference in America. We need to make a difference in lives. Amen. Oh, the possibilities we have. When I look at these sheets and, and these numbers, and over 86 volunteers right now working this sheet, and I got room to put in another 25. And it's just growing and growing. And God wants us to reach to them and help them. Making a difference. Well, of course, the pastor said earlier, before I got up, he said, if you're not saved, you need to be saved. Because you can't make a difference until you've had a difference made. Amen. And so the, this morning as we think about my, my desire is to replace Brother LeClaire with another volunteer or two. My desire is that somebody else in the church might pick up that mantle and care, go to the pastor, talk to the pastor, get his uh, uh, permission, and then let's see if we can reach into this area and get more men and women saved. Every Sunday morning we have services at the women's prison in Ypsilanti. Every Sunday morning we have a team in there. And last week they had 26 in the team, or 26 uh, inmates come out and there were seven saved. And so it's just a constant, constant turnover of people. But it takes people like you making a difference. But if you're not saved, you can't begin to do the job. 
I wonder if you know you're going to heaven today. It's not a matter of being a member of this church. I mean, if you never become a member of this church, if you never come back to this church, it doesn't. That none of that matters. It's all about you and Christ. When that preacher shared that with me up there in Baraga that day, it was 3.30 in the afternoon in the cafeteria of the prison. And he shared with me how simple it was. And he said, Mr. Demoselis, wouldn't you like to trust Christ and get it settled? I said, I think so. And can I tell you, it's made a difference. My dear wife's in heaven today, but oh, how she helped me along the way, how she was a helpmate, how we learned together, how I praise God for it. So I wonder if you're for sure saved. It's a matter of calling on Christ. Follow your heads with me, if you would, please. Right where you're at, nobody moving, please. <laughs> 